I'm currently on a cruise and I'm staying in a balcony cabin that has a feature that I've never seen on a cruise ship before. It's very different from what you'd expect when you hear the word balcony and I've spent most of this week trying to work out why the cruise line made this decision. I've seen and done some things this week that I definitely didn't expect when I booked this cruise and picked this cabin. Usually when you look at cruise ship balcony cabins they're pretty similar. The designs do change between the ships and the layout inside might change but the actual balcony space is pretty standard. It's usually a rectangle of some sort sort with two chairs on it, maybe a table if you're lucky, but that's about it. The ship that I'm currently on is the Celebrity Edge, built in 2018. She was the first of Celebrity's Edge class and she was a game changer in lots of ways. The cabins are no exception to that. When I booked this cruise, I decided I would book what is called an Infinite Veranda. There are 918 Infinite Verandas on this ship and they're 23% bigger than balcony cabins on other Celebrity ships. I usually am an inside cabin girl, but when I saw this cabin with lots of very good and very bad reviews, I knew that I had to try it out for myself. One person described it as the best room that they've ever stayed in, but another person said that it was so bad that it ruined their vacation beyond repair. I did have somebody recently tell me that their vacation was ruined because the library was too cold, so I do try and take reviews like that with a pinch of salt. The description of the cabin promised to blur the boundaries between inside and outside, and that it definitely did. My cabin was assigned at the time of booking, and I was given cabin 7156 towards the front of deck 7. Quite often cruise lines will give you a discount if you don't pick the specific cabin, but Celebrity didn't have that option, so I just let my travel agent pick. I trusted her, and in the past I've had cabins right at the top of the ship, right at the bottom, right at the front, right at the back, beside the atrium, under nightclubs, you name it I've probably tried it because I'm not very fussy when it comes to cabin location. The cabin that I was assigned looked very good on paper, so I was very optimistic and excited. I'm on this cruise with my mum, so I really hoped that this room would be a place where we could relax and we could watch sailaways together. One of the biggest complaints I've heard about this cabin type was that there wasn't enough separate space, but I hoped that there would be enough room that me and mum could have time together, but also time apart. You don't always want to be in somebody's way 24-7, even if they are your mum. When we boarded the ship, we headed up the stairs to deck 7. I immediately was impressed with the signs and the fact that there were clear labels which showed you which side had the even numbered cabins and which one had the odd numbered cabins. It is a small thing but it does make a big difference if you're someone like me and as my mum puts it, I couldn't find my way out of a paper bag. The decor in the corridors felt very modern too, and I liked how the cabins were set a little bit back from the main walkway. Our cabin was located close to the front stairs, and we found our cruise cards waiting for us in a little package by the door. These cruise cards control everything on the cruise, this is what you charge your drinks to, this is how they know who's on and off the ship, and how you get into your room. I do often get comments from people who don't like the idea that the cruise cards are waiting outside the room. They say, what happens if someone takes those cards and breaks into your room? The way that I see it is that if someone someone comes into this cabin before me, I'm not here and neither is any of my stuff, so why they would want to break into an empty room, I don't know. They might use the toilet or something, maybe, but that's not something that I've ever really worried about. When we walked into the room, I was very impressed by the design. It all felt very modern, it felt bright, it felt spacious. I think the cabin may be a little bit thinner than some of the ones I've had on other ships, but the length and the clever design definitely made up for it. The first thing I noticed was the big beds and the USB sockets, which is always a perk. The sockets were only by one bed though, so if you are staying in this cabin, make sure that you claim that one quickly. My mum has one of those phones that very rarely needs to be charged, and I'm on team iPhone and I need to charge my phone every single night, so my mum very kindly let me have this bed. Moving a little further into the room, there was a big sofa and a desk in front of the mirror. Sadly, no kettle as this is an American cruise line, not a British one, but there were a couple of bottles of water in the room and some crisps. These do cost money though, and once I found out that they cost money, I stopped looking at them as if they were items of food, and I just saw them as decorations for the room. I never buy things from the minibar, and to be honest, I just forget that they're there. Maybe it would be different if it was a can of Pepsi, but these things just didn't tempt me. The cans of soda are actually the same price as they would be in a bar, so if you're someone like me who doesn't have a drinks package, it doesn't really make a difference if you drink it from the minibar or if you go get it yourself. On the top of the desk was this weird looking box, and at first glance you might not know what this is for. I looked inside and I found out that this box held the plug sockets, and the idea is that it kind of keeps the wires tidy. Maybe my chargers are just extra huge, but I couldn't ever close the box when charging my things. It was a nice idea though, and again, there are USB sockets in here. 
Inside the box was a European socket, a US socket, and two multi-country sockets. These two in the middle actually fit UK plugs, which is a rare treat. You very rarely get UK plug sockets on a cruise. If you do have a European adapter with you though, the European socket does have more voltage, so you might as well use that. Underneath was a mini bar and what looked like lots of storage. At this point, the balcony area looked pretty normal. It just looked like we had some sort of different types of doors there. I could see through the doors a little, which did look quite cool, and head Heading out onto the balcony area, I realised that this was very different from what I'm used to. Normally balconies are outside the ship, and that may sound like a weird thing to say, but this balcony doesn't feel like it's outside, it is within the ship. On some cruise ships you'll find sheltered balconies which are similar in some ways, but usually balconies feel like they're outside and they're exposed to the elements. If it's raining or if it's windy, you wouldn't want to be on a normal cruise ship balcony, but one benefit of a cabin like this is that you can still use this space regardless of the weather. The balcony itself was pretty big and there were two comfortable chairs here with a little table. I'm actually filming this video, you're on top of the table and a tissue box and a chair. Hope you like it up there. It's all very nicely designed in neutral colours and looking at the buttons on the side I managed to find the button to slide down the glass to transform it into a balcony. One button was for the blind and the other is for the window. The sun was shining in Barcelona and the breeze was lovely. I did notice right away that the glass moving down was quite noisy and it wasn't exactly fast. I hope that this wouldn't disturb us during our cruise. There is no world in which I can be described as an early bird and I didn't want to be woken up when other people opened up their windows. I suppose that is no different from doors on regular balconies though. I often hear people slamming the doors in the morning or late at night. When the balcony area was open it made the whole room feel very spacious. Being able to hear the water was so peaceful and I knew that we would be sailing away from Barcelona soon so I wanted to stay in the cabin to watch it. I headed back into the main part of the room to have a look at the bathroom and I was very impressed by the size. The shower was large, I loved the overall design and the mirrors made it feel very modern and spacious. There was lots of storage with shelves on both sides and more space under the sink to put extra things. Things. All cabins do come with shampoo, conditioner and body wash in the showers and there's also body lotion and soap by the sink. The shower itself is a pretty good size too, here it is being measured by our mascot Captain Hudson. This is definitely one of my favourite cruise ship bathrooms. It could definitely do with one of those zoomed in makeup mirrors, that's my only suggestion. Is zoomed in the right word? I quite often use tech words in real life now, I clearly spend too much time on YouTube. I'd discover later in the cruise that there was a nightlight in the bathroom which was fantastic when you were using the bathroom in the dark. For some reason the door was magnetic rather than a normal door which meant that there was no way that you could close it quietly. I felt so bad for my neighbours, even if you closed it as carefully as possible it would still make a loud bang. I ended up putting a little towel in the doorway but even with that it still managed to bang. As we had a little bit of time before our sail away, we decided to unpack. There was lots of storage space over by the bed with a few shelves and three very big drawers over by the desk. After unpacking, I put my suitcase under the bed and there was plenty of space down there. I didn't get under the bed like I did on the Norwegian Prima, but my suitcase fit fine. There are two of us sharing this cabin and we've had no problems with storage space at all. It's actually day five of the cruise that I'm recording this and I just found some extra shelves today. It was great to be able to have the balcony window open while we were unpacking and it definitely felt more like we would see and hear what was going on outside than in a regular balcony cabin. They did promise to blur those lines between outside and inside and it did feel like that. As we started to sail away from Barcelona I sat in the balcony area. The bar was right at my eye line when sitting so standing was definitely better but we had the most amazing view of the sail away. There were lots of cranes and shipping containers in the port of Barcelona so it isn't really the most picturesque, but as the cruise went on we saw some beautiful sights from this window. My favourite thing about the balcony setup was that there was glass at the bottom so we could see the view even if we were inside the main part of the cabin. I could lay in bed and watch this scenery which was beautiful and so relaxing. I did enjoy this sofa too, this became my office for the week and I could sit here working away while looking at the scenery going by. In fact this is where I typed the script for this video and it's where I'm actually recording it. Usually I'd have to choose between being inside and outside, but right now this is a bit of both. 
Looking to the right of the window, I noticed that we could see what is called the magic carpet. It's basically like a piece of deck that sticks off the side of the ship and it moves up or down depending on where it's needed. We often sat on it when it was by the pool deck because it would be a bar in the evening and we did have a couple of tender ports on this cruise and on those days it would be used as a platform so that you could get to the tender boats. Usually when you go on a tender boat you have to kind of go through some crew areas but having the magic carpet there felt as though it wasn't an afterthought. It had definitely being planned. Watching this happen from my balcony was just great fun too. I had hours of fun watching the boat sail by and also seagulls. Sometimes some seagulls would join me here too. After our sail away from Barcelona I came back into the cabin and noticed that the mirror was steamed up. Usually the heat from the balcony is kept out there on the balcony, but with this being one big room, the room did get quite hot quite fast. It wasn't ever a problem for us, just something to bear in mind, and the air conditioning did work very well when the window was closed. I imagine that this cabin would be really nice if you were on a cold weather cruise, because you could spend your time in that balcony without having to deal with whatever the weather temperature is outside. It doesn't matter to you. It is important to note though, I think, that the captain and the team on the bridge, they control these windows. So if the weather does start to get bad outside, they will close and there's nothing you can do about it. I am somebody who gets seasick on occasion and the best thing about having a balcony cabin in that situation is being able to get the fresh air whenever I need it. If I had bad weather on this cruise, I wouldn't have been able to do that, which is one of the main benefits of a balcony. So I think that's a shame. We were incredibly lucky with the weather on this cruise though. We had glorious sunshine every single day and this is one of the smoothest ships that I've ever been on. There was not one point where I noticed that we were moving at all. I don't know what kind of magic technology they have in the ship, but it was a very comfortable journey. At this point, we were enjoying our infinite veranda, but I still did have a few concerns. I was worried about how noisy it is, and I didn't know what we would do in the morning. Usually I wake up and open the curtains a little bit to see where we are. I like to kind of slowly let the light in and have a peek at what's outside. Quite often the person I'm cruising with will want to sit on the balcony while I'm inside or vice versa. And the next morning I would find out why that really just isn't possible in this cabin. One of my favorite areas of this cabin is this part that would light up in the evenings. I put my Captain Hudson here and it made me smile every single evening because it looked as though he was being beamed up or something like that. I don't think the coral was particularly particularly comfortable for him to sit on, so I did move that as the cruise went on. When we woke up, I realized that I'd been right about the curtain and blind situation. I'm sharing this cabin with my mum, who likes to get up earlier than me, and usually she'll head out onto the balcony, but there's no way that she could let in any light without turning on the motorized blinds and it waking me up. I can sleep through almost anything too, and it always woke me up. There was no way to kind of open it a little bit, or I guess you could, you'd open it from the bottom a little bit, but then if you wanted to look out, you'd have to kind of sit or lay on the floor. If you're sharing this cabin with people who were on the same schedule as you, I can't imagine that that's a problem, but because this is one room, you do lose the two separate spaces. You all have to either be light or dark or inside or outside, it can't really change. The window itself was very good at blocking out the sound, and even when we docked in busy industrial ports, we never heard a thing unless that window was open. Because of the way that the balconies are set into the ship, you never ever hear your neighbors, which is fantastic. If someone is having a row on the balcony beside you, you will never know about it. And that is your Britishism of the week. It is the word row. And I did not realize that this was a Britishism until I met up with my friend Tony from the Lolita Loca YouTube channel. A row is just like a small argument. It's a disagreement about something. Couples have rows, families have rows. It's a very normal thing. It doesn't sound like a word anymore, but row is your Britishism of the week. A little later in the cruise, I was walking along the corridor and I had a chance to look in at one of the ocean view cabins. The one that I saw was basically the same as my infinite veranda, apart from the fact that the window was smaller and it didn't open. Everything else in the cabin was the same and I think I would be quite happy in that room. The inside cabins also look really nice too and it's clear that Celebrity have taken the time to kind of organize and decorate the spaces really well. It's the little things like the car Carpets that I really like. Like any cabin, there are some people who would love this one and some people who wouldn't. If you're somebody who likes to spend time inside the main part of your cabin and you want to be able to see the scenery go by while you hear the noises from outside, maybe you feel the heat, this cabin is great for that. If you're somebody who wants to do silhouette dances, it is fantastic for that too. If you're somebody who likes to use the balcony as a separate space or you like to feel the sun on your balcony, a normal balcony would probably be a better option. We never had the sun actually come in because 
because it was set into the ship and we did miss that separate outside space. For me personally, I would pick a traditional balcony cabin over this one, but I would be more than happy to stay in this cabin again for the right price. To me, it just kind of seems like a go-between between an ocean view and a balcony. It's like a ocean view plus. Even though this cabin is controversial for many, I do understand the logic behind it and I can't say that about every cabin that I've ever stayed in. I recently stayed in a cabin on board the Costa Smeralda which had a feature that I never really worked out why it existed. To find out what I thought of the cabin and who should avoid this type of room, watch this video next.